I know there's a lot of you who do not want to hear me say this, but unfortunately, yes, we do have more rain in the forecast. Let's talk first about temperatures. We'll kind of ease our way into it. 84, 85 for our temperatures. I think we get up to 86 in Corsicana there. That's going to be higher than our norm of 80. And then 66, 67 overnight, so we stay above normal. Of course, those clouds will help us to maintain some of that daytime heating so we won't get quite down to our norm of 60 degrees there. And in the medium range, hey, medium for our pollen count. We won't really argue with that a whole lot. So uh, maybe take advantage of that and take advantage of the drier air today because yes, like I said, there's plenty of rain on the way. Here we're looking at the upper levels, the water vapor. So this is the upper level of moisture and you can see there's dry air above us, but you look off to the southwest and here's that next disturbance making its way in. And to our south here, you can see that in the upper levels, everything's moving to the north, uh, from the northwest, they're moving southeast. But at the surface, yeah, we got more gulf moisture coming in and that should actually help to fire some storms later today as well. So let's just dive right into timing all of this out, get straight to it. From the south, we will see storms developing later on this afternoon and evening in the heat of the day here. And it looks like it's gonna make it farther north than I was originally thinking. I wasn't really banking on this much, but models have really insisted that this is gonna make it our way. And then off to the west, you can see the earliest kind of inklings of what we will see later. And boom, you can see off to the west that blows up and so does the complex to our south. Now, I think that the HR model might be kind of pushing this a little hard. You get into 8 p.m. and I don't think we're gonna see that quite as widespread. I think it's pretty well right on off to the west, but to our south, I don't know if we'll quite see that much. There could be some stronger storms there, but again, I don't think we see a whole lot of this, and that's eight o'clock by 10 o'clock. Sunset should take away the heating from some of these storms and should see that kind of falling apart, but off to the west, that has its own driver that has that disturbance moving through, so that won't slow down a whole lot. Now, midnight here, we'll see that starting to approach our western zones. Looks like to the south, on the south end of this, we'll start to see a squall line develop and move to the southeast, and uh, I think that is fair. I think from Waco on down to Austin and Kerrville, might be a bit of a bumpy ride there, but to the north, as you can see here, South, it stays strong, but to the north, I think it starts to weaken a little bit. So we could see some severe storms in this, could see, see some gusty winds and hail and that kind of thing, but I really don't think that we're looking at too terribly much to be concerned about. By 4 a.m. here, fully involved, but I do think it's more rain, some lightning, thunder, that kind of thing, some gusty winds possibly. I'm not really too concerned about large hail at this point, uh, but we'll, we'll keep going here and show you by 6 a.m. There could be some additional showers and thunderstorms on the back end of this, but then by 8 a.m., I think really most, if not all of that, is moving out. Certainly by 10 a.m. noon, yeah, that should be out of here. And we should get a break through most of the day tomorrow. And then from there, we've got to talk about more. But for right now, let's talk about the severe weather threat here. We're just in a slight risk. You can see off to the west, that's where the main action should be. And you can see a little bit more space down here for that heavier uh, complex of storms. But as this moves eastward, we will see a weakening trend. Now you can see here, they have extended this to the southeast here to uh, almost to Beaumont there. And I think that's for that afternoon thunderstorm cluster that'll come in this evening. We could see some hail and gusty winds in those storms. I don't think we're looking at really much of a tornado threat either way. I'm not really concerned about that. It just doesn't seem to really be in the cards, but that does not mean that it's impossible. Somebody messaged me last night reminding me, hey, uh, there was an area to our Northwest that was in a marginal risk and they still had a number of tornado warnings. So nothing is impossible, nothing is ruled out, but I don't think we're looking at too much of a tornado threat going into this. Of course, I will always be watching that for you and we'll bring updates as needed. The other thing we have to talk about here, unfortunately, is the flooding, and we've had plenty of that recently, so any kind of rain we get, especially any kind of organized rain, there's going to be flood risks. So we do have a flood watch that was issued earlier today. That goes through 1 p.m. Thursday. I won't be surprised to see more of these watches throughout the rest of the week here. But this is the flood watch we have. Johnson County's not included, but it does include Hamilton County, Bosque County, Hill, Ellis, uh, Navarro, Kaufman, Van Zant, uh, Anderson, uh, excuse me, Henderson. I, I get the two mixed up. There's too many counties that are similarly named close together, like Limestone, Freestone here, McLennan, and Coriel, and on from there. So a number of these counties included, and really this was where most of the flooding has been over the last several days, last few weeks, honestly. And we will continue to watch that be a problem here, unfortunately. So if you've dealt with flooding already, just 
keep in mind there could be more in the cards, although this doesn't look like the storm we had last weekend where it got here and then it just planted. I don't think that happens tonight. I'm at least hoping it doesn't happen tonight, so we'll continue again to bring you updates on that. So let's just look at the whole forecast here, and I want to tell you about what to expect this weekend with the more rain chances. Today, most of the day is fine, but this evening, tonight, overnight tonight, into early tomorrow morning, pretty well covered in rain. 85 today, 67 tonight, a little bit cooler tomorrow, 82 degrees, and tomorrow afternoon, evening, we could see a few showers and thunderstorms because we have a front coming in, and unfortunately, that front won't bring us anything cool. I have a cold front here, but it's just going to move into North Texas as a cold front. It's going to stall out. So really, that brings us to the rest of the forecast here, and it's kind of fuzzy, and I, I don't like that, but you've heard me say before that when we get these stationary fronts, they come in, and that stationary front can kind of be a focus of some storms add in some uh, storm systems that are coming through and some disturbances, that all kind of comes into the mix and some of that can be harder to time out. So really, here's the way I have it. 30% chance of storms tomorrow evening, tomorrow night. I think we just look at a just a few scattered storms throughout the area. Friday, 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms. I think it could just be on and off through the day. And then all weekend, basically. I, unfortunately, it's just hard for me to say it's going to be exactly this time, exactly that time. I know we got some prom stuff coming up. There might be some graduation things going on, too. Different festivities going on this weekend. And unfortunately, it does look like you're going to need to be prepared for rain. I think the best chance of rain is overnight Saturday into Sunday. That's kind of the time period where we have more certainty, but that does not mean that we can't see periods of rain. Now, there will be periods of dry in between those periods of rain, but just be prepared that we have enough ingredients in the area to just make rain kind of be off and on throughout the next four days, unfortunately. Now we get to next week. Monday could be a few more showers and thunderstorms. That forecast is a little unclear, so just wait a few days. We might be changing that. And then we're warming up Tuesday with dry weather and should be dry at least for a few days going into next week. So stay tuned. We got a couple of things going on here. We have the disturbance coming in that will bring the storms later tonight. Before that, though, this afternoon and evening could be some stronger storms moving in. But overnight tonight, that flood watch is in effect. More storms possible tomorrow evening, and that goes into the next several days through the weekend of just off and on rain possible. Best chance of rain is late Saturday, early Sunday, but there could be more rain on the front and back end of that. And then it looks like we do get a, another clear spell coming in for next week. So stay tuned to South Metro Weather for more updates throughout the rest of the day and the next several days as more rain moves into North Central Texas.